Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're continuing <coughs> with God's help in the essay, which originally was a speech given by the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, <coughs> Rebbe Shner Zalman, about 250 years ago. And it's coming to explain in a way that only the Rebbe can explain what is God and what how are the Jewish people special and what God wants from us and what is the world and what God wants from the world and what God wants us to do with the world. What are we here for? So it'll probably surprise you to know that everybody got it wrong up to now. Everybody. <clears throat> and that the, the, the what has to be done to the world is that it all depends on the Jews properly attaching themselves to God. And here the Rebbe explains what it is. Here the Rebbe explains exactly what is expected from the Jews, how it can possibly be that the whole entire world, billions and billions of people, depend on just the Jews and doing what they're supposed to do and doing it according to the Torah. And one of the, the conditions of doing according to the Torah is that it has to be with love. You have to have love of God. You have to have emotions. God has to be really valuable and real and present. And you have to feel that it's really yours. Okay, so this is mostly, <clears throat> this, is, this speech is relevant to the Jewish people. But eventually, the job of the Jewish people is that everyone should feel how incredibly close and real God is. And God is not, like all the other religions say, some sort of a distant power or force or whatever. But rather, just one moment. Hello. Right, so what did the Rebbe say? <clears throat> the Rebbe said like this. The Jewish people have this obligation to improve and to maintain and to transform the whole entire world. The whole entire world, something that's really never been done before. <clears throat> the only time the whole world was really the way it was supposed to be was in those few hours that Adam was created before he ate from the tree. Before he ate from the tree. Then everything was okay. And there was God gave the world another chance when he gave the Torah to the Jews. And then it says that temporarily death was taken from the world. <clears throat> but the Jews couldn't hold on to it and they worshipped the golden calf. Okay. Now we're here to fix this whole business up. To make the world the way it's supposed to be. Right. Some of the people wrote to me, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of people actually that watch, I mean, rel relatively, that watch Some people wrote to me, there cannot be good without bad. There cannot be truth without evil. There cannot be. All right. So the Rebbe said like this, he, he, he made the, the, the comparison. He said the whole world is like a big body. And, and the, the Jewish people, they're in, in charge of the life of the world, to bring life into the world. How do you do that? Through Torah and the commandments. The commandments are 248 positive commandments. That exactly corresponds to the limbs of man. So the Jewish people are like one big man, which is evident from the fact that when God took the Jews out of Egypt, he told Moses to go into power and say, my son, my chosen ones, Israel. My son. It didn't say my sons. My son, my chosen one. Made a mistake. In other words, the Jews are referred to as singular. All those prophecies about Mashiach and Isaiah, and either it's talking about uh, <clears throat> King Hezekiah, or it's talking, sometimes it's talking about the Jewish people. He suffered for his sins. It's talking about the Jewish people. Because the Jewish people is singular. 
In addition to that, they're also, also talking about Mashiach. But he's talking about Mashiach. Okay. So these, the, the Rebbe here is doing what Mashiach is supposed to do. The Mashiach is a person that's going to educate everyone. And the Rebbe here is educating us. So he's telling us that the Jewish people are like one big body. The commandments are like the limbs of the body. And even more, so all the limbs of a person's body depends, of course, on the brain. And the brain moves the limbs through the spinal cord. The spinal cord is that main nerve that goes from the brain to the body. The same thing is the Jewish people, they already are what's called the head, Israel. And here the Rebbe is explaining the difference between Israel and Yaakov. <clears throat> Two different aspects of, of Jews. So here we got. So the Jewish people are called Yisrael. They're Yisrael is Yili Rosh, the head. <clears throat> but God wants us to bring this into the world. Like we said, the purpose of the Jews is to fix up the world. So, and that's the idea of the, the spine. The spine has all these vertebrae. But the main thing of the spine is not the vertebrae. The main thing of the spine is the spinal cord. Says the Rebbe, interestingly enough, that the 248 positive commandments correspond to these 248 limbs or bones, different ways of, of counting it. But the spinal cord is not counted as one of them. Similarly, prayer is not one of the commandments. The spinal cord is likened to prayer. Now, in Judaism, prayer is not what everybody else thinks. Usually think people think that prayer is <clears throat> that you ask God for something. And here, the essence of prayer is <clears throat> we're giving God everything. And we're requesting that God should fix up the world, that the world should be the way it's supposed to be, the way he wants it to be. <clears throat> but we're giving the whole thing of, of prayer is appreciating God standing before God and appreciating how infinitely, infinitely distant and great and almighty God is, and simultaneously how infinitely, infinitely close and loving and <clears throat> available God is. On one hand, God is infinitely far away. He creates all the angels. He creates all the spiritual. He's not spiritual. He creates the spiritual. He creates the whole world. On the other hand, God creates me. Creates each and every one. So God is infinitely close to us. And even more than that, God wants us to pray to him. And God will react to our prayers. I need correction. Ishti Omra. This is a surprise. So the Rebbe says, so prayer. Prayer is us giving to God, ourselves to God. When a person realizes how infinitely close God is, that God is creating us, that God loves us infinitely, so you have love of God and you have fear of God. And then after that, you can make your requests to God, not because you're requesting for yourself, <clears throat> because if there's something missing in the world, then that's a sign that God is not revealed in the world. We talked about that yesterday. When God is revealed in the world, it's like the soul is revealed in the body, then the person is healthy. Automatically. <clears throat> and here it's also automatic health. That's the idea, to make the world a healthy place to reveal God here. It all depends on the Jews. The Jews have to make this whole dynamic system going that God enlivens us, and he wants us to return the energy to him, and etc. As long as it's not working, it's a sign that somehow or other God is not revealed here. And that's what we're requesting when we pray, <clears> that God should be revealed. Or in the language of Kabbalah, that we are praying for the Shekhinah. We are praying for God's presence in the world. And the fact that there's people that are sick and the people that are poor and the people that are, are, uh, are uh, <coughs> depressed and people that are sitting in prison, et cetera, et cetera, the, the, the fact that's just a sign that something is missing and the connection of God to the world and the relation of the creator in the creation. Valid. Okay, so it all depends on our prayer. We have to pray that the prayer <clears throat> is the life force. 
like the spinal cord that goes from the brain, <clears throat> which is the attachment, the essential attachment of every Jew to God, automatic attachment, but you have to bring it down. <clears throat> See, it all depends on our hard work. Now, prayer is very difficult work, prayer. Prayer is difficult work. Why? Because you're not just standing out, standing and saying, okay, God, I need a couple more dollars and a couple more zeros in my bank account. And, you know, I need to be healthy. And that, that's true. And, and in fact, you're supposed to take all your needs to God, whether you're emotional about it or not. But that's not the whole real purpose of God, of prayer. The purpose of prayer is supposed to be that we totally change our <clears throat> awareness of what's valuable and what's not valuable. We totally change our love and our fear. When something's really valuable and it's ours, then you have, when somebody gives you a check for a million dollars and you realize that it's real and your name is written on the check and that the person is telling the truth, so suddenly you're filled with appreciation for the person who gave you the check and you're happy. And also you start to get afraid. I don't want anybody to take this check from me. I don't want anybody to know that I have so much money. <clears throat> right and in Israel, when they win the, the lottery, they take a they put a, a bag over the person's head so you can't see who it is. You just see that someone won. They put a bag over his head with a, with a, a hole, a three holes, one for the nose and one for the, <clears throat> the eyes. So that because the first people are afraid that everybody's going to know who has the money. The same thing is when you see how precious God is, then you're afraid to lose that connection. And the way of losing the connection is just by refusing to do God what God wants or to do things that God doesn't want. <clears throat> so therefore, we have to prayer. Prayer means to start to realize, realize, to feel that God is more real than we are. In fact, to start to feel that we are not real at all. Our existence is just a total miracle that God is creating all the time. And that brings us to love. Let's go. He calls it to feel the whole order of prayer until Shimon Esra, until these 18 requests we make from God to bless the years and get we heal the sick and etc. All of the Jewish prayer, if you look in a Jewish prayer book, there's <clears throat> it's ordered in an orderly way. First of all, there's these praises. Of King, the King David wrote uh, is Psalms, and then after that, there's all these praises that the people of the Great Assembly wrote. That's like 400, 500 years after King David. And those are the blessings before Shema Yisrael, and then we say Shema Yisrael. It's the sentences from the sentence the paragraphs from the Torah, and then we get up to say Shmon Esrei. But that's really called prayer. Shmona Esrei is when we request, make 18 different requests from God. <clears throat> it says the whole entire order of prayer until this Shmona Esrei is just a preparation for Shmona Esrei Dainu. Kadei in order, Sheyokhali Palel, that a person will be able to pray Shmona Esrei with intention. Miru'uta Lugliba, with your heart aroused. Sheba Omru, that when you say, Boruch Ato Hashem, when you say, Blessed are you, God, 18 times in the Shemona Esrei prayer, you will really, truly desire. You will really want with the arousal of your heart, that there will be Gilui Shem That when you're requesting for health, you're not requesting just that the person should be healed. You're requesting that the cause of sickness should be gone. The cause of sickness is that God is not revealed to you. The creator is not revealed in his creation. When you're requesting money, you're not requesting that just you should have more money in your bank account. <clears throat> you're requesting that the reason for poverty should go away. And the reason for poverty is that Hashem is not revealed to you. That really, that's what Boruch means, we said. The word boruch means to be drawn down. <clears throat> Ata, God, your essence, yud kevavte. You want that the name, this name of God, this the name of God we said before, it symbolizes the, 
the steps of uh, the uh, revelation goes through in order to get to this world. The steps that blessings go through in order to get to this world. You want that God should be revealed in the world. But first of all, you have to have an, a, a feeling what God is, and you have to have the main thing is the feeling that God is infinitely good and that he creates everything. But is that fact is not revealed in the world, and that's why we pray. That's what it means. It depends on the Jews. Look, and therefore, even though it says that God hears the, the, every prayer, look, <clears throat> and therefore, Kadeshi in order that there should reach Adam, a person, this level, Tiknu Chazal, the rabbi said that first you have to say Psuki de Zimra. Psuki de Zimra, like we said, sentences, sentences, Psuki means sentences of song, M mainly sentences from King David, King David said. And Baruchas Kriyashma and the blessings before and after Kriyashma. Look at a Jewish sitter and an English one, and you'll see. Kabayim Rizal, like the rabbi say, La'olam Yisad Aram, a person should first of all organize Shib Chushel, the praises of God. First of all, praise God. Come to realize who you're talking to when you pray. You're talking about the king of the universe, the king that creates me, creates us. Enlivens us, provides for us, protects us. Melech, Ozer, Moshiach, Mogen. And then afterwards, when you have a feeling and appreciation of who you're praying for, then you pray. The Indian, the explanation is like this. Kihine, Pesuki, the Zimmer, the sentences of song, these sentences of King David, Uberchus Yotzer, and the blessing of that we say before Shema, which is Yotzer Or. Is talking about where we it mentions Maskir and Anu mean Hashira Hashava Shomalachim. It talks about the praises and the songs that the kings that the that the angels praise God. For Omi Biyira, they say in fear three times, Kaddish, Kaddish, Kaddish. I know, namely, Eich Shehu Yisbrech. How it is that God is holy, moved out, separate from the world. Ain't no Musa, not impossible to understand in any way what God is. The least machshavat tafisabei, there is no thought that can possibly grasp what God is. The ain't a rocha love kalal, there's nothing even comparable to God at all. So I mean, just think about it. If God is really creating me, <clears throat> then that's that's just really insane. No, what do you mean creating me? You feel something's creating you? It feels like, like in a, you know, one of those old movies, you fl things are flickering, you know, things are flickering, you feel that things are stopping and coming back. But the fact, that's the fact, God is creating us. <clears throat> why don't we feel it? <clears throat> a lot of different reasons why. But the fact is God created the world so we wouldn't feel it. That's the word, the word world means hidden. Olam, halem. That's why we have to pray to break through this ignorance, this veneer of self, of certainty. I here I am. How did Popeye say, I am what I am, and that's all what I am? Right? That's happened when you look at the world with only one eye. Yourself, I, capital I. As soon as you <clears throat> start to think, listen, maybe I'll be creative, maybe God really exists, then you open up a little hole, a little open, a little window. You start to think, listen, maybe I really don't know what's going on over here. Maybe I'm being created. Why would God want to create me? <clears throat> you say, well, listen, I don't know why, but maybe the fact is I really am being created. You know, he decided, I mean, the world is not creating itself, is it? Maybe, could be, when you start to think about this more and more, you start to feel like the angels feel, that they're all praising God all the time because God is creating them. Why he's creating the angels? It's beyond understanding. Late machshavat There's no thought that can possibly grasp God. There's nothing comparable to God. There's no such thing in the world as creation. No one creates anything. You can rearrange things. Composers take letters, take notes, and they arrange them into music. <clears throat> right? Even you can change energy into mass, mass into energy, but you can't take nothing. There's no such thing as nothing. And God takes nothing and makes it into angels and crazy. We can't even conceive what nothing is, a vacuum, who knows? But before 5,782 plus years ago, there was 
no world. What was the true reality? We don't know what that means, true reality. Just there's no comparison to God whatsoever. But the fact is, is he's creating everything, and he's also infinitely close to us. He's creating us. That's this. We learn about the Ofan and these angels of Barash Gadol. They have a, they're in a tremendous noise. They understand a little bit that there's nothing <coughs> holy like God. There's no nothing real like God. Hine, Hamalachim, all the angels, they're called Omdim. They're standing. Like it says, we're trying now to understand what is making these angels going so crazy. There must be something, <clears throat> something that's re very real and very powerful and valuable and whatever it is that are making all these angels burn up. And so it says, all these angels are standing. Like it says, Venatati lecha mahalchim bena Omdim elu. I have made you. I think this is God speaking to Ezekiel when he gave the prophecy. He said, God, <clears throat> I made you. You were walking through these standing ones. Like it says, in the Atse Shitim Omdi. Like it says that there's these wood. We talked about it. Remember when we talked about the, the tabernacle? <clears throat> okay. Gershon. Hainu. She'em Ra. Madregos. Bechinus. Raglayim. Belevat. The angels, they're like standing. They're just feet. What do you mean feet? <clears throat> they're like the feet of God, the lowest part of God. Yisrael, the Jewish people. Shalomata, they're bechenes rosh. That's Yisrael. Yisrael is how the Jewish people, to Yisrael, I know, li rosh. The letters Yisrael are li, lamed, yud, lamed, yud, rosh, resh, ayin, shin, li rosh. <clears throat> the Jewish people, they are the head. All over Machshava. First of all, they come from the, what's called the head, the brain of God. They rose up in God's thought. The world was created from God's speech. The Jews, this idea that it's going to be a special people called the Jews, that came in God's thought. Look out, therefore, Kasher, Yassim, Adam, a person puts this to his heart. Eich, Shabbat, Malachim, how is it the, the angels? The Ophanim and these different types of angels. Ophanim, a Kodesh. There's a Serafim and the Chayot, a Kodesh and Ophanim. All of the angels, they're just like the feet of God. And they're standing in love and, and, and in love and in fear. Raj Gadol, and they're screaming out to God from their, their, their emotion. And they say, Kadosh, Kadosh, God, you are holy, holy. And other angels are saying, Boruch Shein Kavod, blessed is the name of God. Why are all the angels all screaming out and yelling? Meet Palut from the excitement. Hasagatam of their understanding the greatness of God. The Israel and the Jewish people, Shein Bechin is Rosh, they are the head. Heim Bechin is Shina. But the Jewish people, that they are <clears throat> the head, and the angels, they're all screaming out to God. They're really excited. And the Jewish people for sure should be excited, but we're not, because we're Bechin is Shina, we're asleep. Kamosh Katuv, like King David said, Hainu Kacholamim, we were like dreamers. Even when we pray and we have a little awareness of what the angels are excited about, after the prayer, after we pray, the love of God goes away. All of a sudden, God is not real. The world is real. You finished praying, and the first thing you do, right, when you were praying, it could be you had a little sort of a glimpse of the greatness of God, the wonder of God, the goodness of God, the closeness of God, how much God loves us. He's creating us. <clears throat> you feel this. As soon as you stop praying, all of a sudden, you're not thinking anymore. Reality, back to reality. You come all of a sudden, there's your body, your, your family. <clears throat> you have to, all of a sudden, your, yourself becomes the main thing. Are you there? And by means of this, he's murmur, the bold person should become very bitter. I mean, God is creating me all the time, even when I go to business. In fact, God is creating my business. <clears throat> and all I'm thinking about is the business. I'm not thinking about God at all. In fact, the only time I think about God is maybe, maybe a couple of seconds every morning when I pray. As with this, a person becomes very bitter. It says, when Mashiach comes, one of the main things of Mashiach is that everyone will feel the Creator. Everyone, all the non-Jews, they'll only think about the Creator. They won't, as it is now, all the religions are just thinking about yourself all the time. 
how I'm going to get into heaven, how I'm going to get a reward, how I'm not going to get punished. <clears throat> the future says everybody's only going to think about God like the angels, but even more so. <clears throat> we have a higher potential for perceiving God than the angels. We're like the level of head. And the angels, they're like the feet. <clears throat> and our, we're going to teach, the Jews will teach and be an example for the whole world. We're not going to be an example for the angels. <clears throat> a person, but we see that how far away are from the, we Jewish people are from what we're supposed to be, then we become very, very, how do you say, bitter. Be careful. You read Azu from this descent. She yard to Neshama that the soul came down from Igra Roma from a high place. The beer, the Igra Roma from a high place, etc. It says to a, a low pit. Elionim Lamata, the highest levels we've brought down into low. In the in the twenty fourth chapter of the Tanya, he's very very descript about this. Very blunt. So this is like taking the head of a king and sticking him into a toilet that's filled with filth. So this is no bigger. This we take our godly soul, and we stick it into the world. The a person all of a sudden realizes, what am I doing? He cries out to God, but to God. But that's what it says, Rizal, that's what it says, the rabbis say, that you, when you pray, you're supposed to be very serious. What does it mean you're supposed to be very serious? You're supposed to always be happy. It is a commandment that you're always supposed to be happy. You're happy that you can serve. You're happy that you have a challenge. What does it mean you're supposed to be covered rose? You're supposed to be very serious. Says the Rebbe, you're supposed to be happy because, not just to be happy because you force yourself to be happy like a play actor, but because you suddenly realize you've got what to be happy about. In order to have to be happy about God, you have to think about it. But he's born in it, you have to think. What do you think about? Be Rita Gadola, how far I have come, descended. Zu Rosh, that the head, Nish Palma Odlamata, that the head, the Jewish people are the head. Li Rosh. And how we've come down into the world that we're acting like everybody else, and even sometimes even worse. Shekhib al Afra says that we're like dead, we're like buried in the ground. Vizel, <clears throat> COVID Rosh. That's what it means, COVID Rosh. What does it mean, COVID Rosh? That we realize how far the Rosh has come down, how we're Jewish people. How could we get so involved? And these things that are the opposite of what our creator is creating us for every moment. Then a person will come to be very humble. Why humble? Because a person says, how did I get myself in this situation that I don't think about God? I don't care about God. I don't even think God exists. I don't even know what they're talking about. These commandments and things like that. What are you talking about? And suddenly you realize one second, wow, there is a God. How far away have I gotten? This brings a person to a tremendous humility. Why? Because why have I gotten so far? Because I thought I was the boss. Suddenly a person realizes, well, I'm not the boss at all. I've tried to be the leader of this thing and I'm just controlling my life. You know, I, whatever I want, I have to be. And I've just gone in the totally wrong direction. Heinel, perish, COVID, Rosh, Kipishuto. That a person feels very, how do you say, broken. Value of these appointments of this, you come to Yitzhak al Hashem, you cry out to God, but Tsar, the Or, but you, then you, what do you call it? You want to return. I want to return to what I really am. Like these people are drug addicts, right? So the, the, they can say to themselves, one way of getting out of being a drug addict is he says, listen, is this really who I am? This is who I am. This is what I'm expecting from life. That I'm just every day just going to, you know, take this drug or whatever it is do this uh, addictive thing, compulsive thing that I'm doing. That's my whole life. Just do this. Like my whole life is like one instant of nothingness. It's just repeating the same stupidity over and over again. Suddenly, well, I got to return to who I really am. But who am I really? Who am I really supposed to be? Says the Rebbe, oh, you're supposed to be surrendered to the creator of the universe. And you're supposed to act like the son of the creator of the universe. You're supposed to act like the, Beloved of the creator of the universe, you're supposed to do what the creator of the universe wants the way he wants it. What he wants is the Torah. The way he wants it is with love and fear. Get yourself together. Return back to being a head. Don't be a tail. Aruta the Liba. 
the shuv el Hashem to return back to your Creator. The zil bechinas ava. That's what's called loving God with all of your heart in Kriyashma. How do they call it by means of all this coming to these levels of love and appreciation of God? Yochol of Akesh. Then afterwards, you can request from God really in Shimon Esrei Boruch Ato Hashem that you really want God to be revealed in the world. She had Giloy or in Sof, that you really want God to be revealed here. Shalamata Bishtashlutamat. That God, how he is above, above the angels, should be revealed down here. That the whole world should be a healthy and a happy and a productive and a dynamic and a living and a blessed place. And every second should be, we should feel a, it's a, a miracle, brand new. And everything will be positive. We'll think positively and speak positively and act positively because we'll feel positively. The calls and all this, this is, but it all depends on the Jews. And that all this is what's called the service of the heart. Zut fila. That's what prayer is. Prayer is coming to appreciate and to love and to fear the God because he's so precious and so amazing. And that he's nothing, he's creating us. Allah, Allah, but afterwards, then after you finish praying. And you made all these blessings, and you want to bless, bring God into the world. Like the spinal cord brings life into the body. Now you have to have a body. What's the body revealing? This is the in the 248 positive commandments. Aham or to draw down this light into the vessels. The yo to be dirabatachtonim, so that there should be a dwelling in this physical world. Now, I, this seems a, bit, a little bit sort of, you know, weird. I mean, much more, how do you say, uh, easy to understand and sort of logical, if you want to call it, and inspiring on things like communism or, you know, these other uh, political or economic systems that, you know, you, you bring sort of proofs how they work and, and you can sort of understand what you're dealing with. We're dealing with, you know, money and, and food on the table and that's it. And, and all these, but all these things that they've tried, they haven't worked. The world is still as terrible as it was before. There's still wars and hatred and things. And libertinism and whatever it is. All the, the Greeks had all these ideas of sol solutions. If you look a little bit in Greek history, you see the, <clears throat> all these people, the Essenes and the, the, the not the, the, I'm sorry, the, 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 what is it? I already forgot. <laughs> I learned that stuff once. But anyway, the, all these different philosophies and, and approaches to life, you know, just Epicureanism and Stoicism and all oh, I don't remember, and pl pl Platonic ideas. And it is, oh, they had all these ideas before to fix up the world. And they're all really very logical and genius, but they don't work. Here are the Jewish people, we have our idea, and it's going to work. The problem is, is up to now it hasn't worked. The Jewish people have been doing these things and they just gotten punished and burned and killed and everybody, everybody hates them. But the only thing we can we do have on our side is the Jewish people are still here. We're still existing, and the Torah is still here. And the point of the Rebbe is the reason that the Torah and the Jewish people are still here, and the commandments are still here. And while all the other religions and things like that have not lasted this long, or at least that the reason is, is because we have, they are the solution to the world's problems. And the Rebbe is telling us that up to now, we haven't really utilized them the way they were supposed to be used. And that's why we say the Rebbe, the Rebbe is all the Rebbe's of Chabad of the Mashiach, because they're trying to let us know how to use the Torah and the commandments to fix up the whole world, because it depends on us. In behold, Omer is all the Rebbe, say, it is better to have one moment of... Eh, it is better to have one moment of tshuva and my symptom of re return to God and doing good deeds in this world. We call Chayolam above that all the life of the world to come. Chayolam above because the world to come, heaven, Urat Bechin is Ziva, Shechin is just a ray of godliness. Hainu, namely Ziva or Abba it's just like a little shine, like a, what do you want to call it? A, a, a picture of a picture of a picture of what reality is. Shemizen, Anim, and Ashamos, Umitangim. That the souls, after a person dies, if he was a good person, whatever, according to God's standards, then he goes to heaven. And in heaven, you get pleasure. Where do you get pleasure from? 
a little tiny ray dimmed down a million times, but a ray revealed godliness. And this is tremendous pleasure the soul gets. But it says that one moment in this world of doing good deeds is worth all of the all of the pleasures of the world to come. How can that be? It says by means of chuva, my by means of returning to God in this world, we draw down revealed godliness really in this world. We don't see it, true, but we have to take the Rebbe's word for it that it is being revealed in the world every time a Jew does a commandment, and it's building up. It's like money in the bank. <clears throat> this comes from the source of light, Vaziv she'en, faith. You have that faith. Ella ha'ora levad. This is only, this is what keep the, kept the Jewish people going. They've been expelled and killed and murdered and this, and they still believe in God and put into concentration camps and, and raped and, and, and stolen from and expelled from all these different countries all these crazy things that forced conversions, they tried the conversion, and nevertheless, they still hold on to it. Uh, the Jew, Judaism, why? <clears throat> because faith, faith, deep down, deep down inside of every Jew, there's a certainty without any doubt that all this is true. It's just that <clears throat> not so deep, everything external to that, you see and you feel that it's simply not true, but deep, deep down, every Jew knows that it is, and that, these difficulties arouse this little point of Judaism. There's a lot of Jews that it doesn't arouse, but it's there even in them also. <clears throat> Shali them, this is by means of the commandments, we draw down an extra light, not just in this world, but also in Gan Eden, also in heaven from in Sof, from the infinite one, which is the source of this ray of godliness, which gives all the pleasure in the world to come. So by means of us doing commandments, it adds on light, not just in this world, but in the heavens as well. And after a person dies, so he feels a little bit of this light that's added up into heaven, but that's nothing compared to what's really added on here. We just can't see it. He named, he calls it from all this, we explain the whole idea of avoda. Now we can explain the whole idea of avoda. We talked about what the idea of Yisrael is. Yisrael is the head, the top part of the Jew, the essence of the soul. That's the idea of avoda, to reach, to go back to this level. That's what tshuva means. Ma'ayyan shu'ula hamshich, mainly to draw down godliness, <clears throat> to make God revealed in this world, namely by doing the commandments, the positive and the negative commandments. But these positive and negative commandments have to have the proper intention, and that's by means of prayer. The Rebbe is just going over what we said. Baruch <clears throat> Hashem, blessed are you, God, to draw down you, the essence of God, to draw down this light by means of our service of our heart. Like it says, if you put, <clears throat> take God to your to heart, then Ruch of Nishmato, I love you, you, yourself, then God will add on extra soul to you. In order that we should have the request in Shimon Esrei true, so first of all, we have to have the prayers first. Okay? Calls uh, all this. Who is Bechina? So Madrid is Yaakov. Drawing down God into the world, that's this level of Yaakov. What do we say? There's two levels of the Jews. Yisrael. Yisrael is who the Jews really are. They're the head. And Yaakov is to draw this down into the world. Shehu Mamshich, this draws down <clears throat> godliness to be Dira B'tachtoni. So Yisrael, that's the true identity. The, the unity of every Jew with the essence of God. We're sons of God. <clears throat> to arouse this, that's called service. To arouse this. But then there's a whole different type of service. And that is to draw this feeling of godliness, the essence, the head, the Yisrael, into the world. And that's called Yaakov. Yaakov is Yud, Akev. Yud is the first letter of God's name, Yud Kev of And Akev are the heels. Like we said before, the spinal cord, which is drawn down from the head, which that's Israel, when it comes down to the feet, that that's Yaakov, because the chut, this, this spinal cord, reaches <clears throat> to the gita nashet, to the, to, the, to the feet. And there, it, with patzel, it goes down to the, the, the not to the feet, to the, to the thighs and to the feet. Vezeo, that's the idea of the Yud. Yaakov is the, the ability of the Jews 
not just to feel that they're the sons of God and they're connected to God, but to draw this down into the world. <coughs> that's the, the, the Yud, that's drawn down into Eichel. Hine, the Yud, this letter Yud, this is the Nikuda Uchma. This is what's called a dark point. The late Bey Chivir, there's no light in it at all. What do you mean? It's so high in the oneness of God that it's incomprehensible. We can't see it. In, uh, it's drawn down from what's called that God makes darkness his hiding place. And it was so high, like high mathematics, right? A third uh, of a 10 year old child goes into a, a class of high mathematics in university, he doesn't understand anything, right? In his class, and he's in the what he's in the, the, the fourth grade, something like that. He's the whiz of the class. He knows how to multiply and add and everything. And he goes over there and they're learning all sorts of you know, complicated logarithms, who knows what. He has absolutely, he's totally in the dark. Things that you don't understand are called dark. This letter Yud of God, this is called dark. It's incomprehensible. And God makes darkness his hiding place. This indicates that God is steam that's concealed and can't be understood. The service of Yaakov is Hamshik to draw down this level, level, Lamata below, that it should be also in this physical world. And that's the level of the heels. How do you do that? By means of the commandments. Arousing this connection to God, that's like Israel. Drawing down, God down into the world by means of the commandments, that's Yaakov. By means of the commandments, the commandments are all physical things. Mamish, the Bechinus Agbayim, and you draw it down to the heels. That this revelation is even day to day what you do when you're not doing commandments and you're not praying. It's drawn down from the level Yud into Akib, that the Yud, the first letter of God's name, this high level, which is incomprehensible, is Mitlabesh, is drawn down to Akvayim, into the heels. Ah, but, in order to do this, this is by means of the commandments. And, but in order to do this, the commandments, you have to do the commandments with a proper attitude. There has to be, first of all, prayer. The prayer is arousing your heart. You can say, like, that's one, one thing. We go on the streets and we put the fill on people. So you can say, you're putting on the fill on people, the guy doesn't even know what he's doing. What, what type, so they, and you have to know what you're doing. Here, the Rebbe just explained. You're supposed to have your heart is supposed to be aroused to God. So the answer to that is very simple. That usually a person that puts tefillin on in the street, he's doing so because he feels that this is something totally incomprehensible and he's not doing it for any reward. It's beyond his understanding, but it's connected to the essence of his soul. He feels that this comes from God. He doesn't know what that means. He doesn't understand how it can be, but he understands that it's the fact. He appreciates God more than a person that puts on every day. That it becomes regular to us. We think we understand something. <clears throat> because there's four levels, which are called Ratzon, Machshava, Dibur, Maisa. There's four levels, which is called will, levels of bringing God down into the world. Will, thought, speech, and action. In order to draw down this level of Yud, Below, that it's a revelation and drawing God's will, Malubash, in God's wisdom is only by means of arousing your heart first. You want to draw godliness down here. <clears throat> you, it depends on the person doing it. Your heart has to be aroused to God. Like it says, I don't want to be with you. You're not doing the commandments in order to go to heaven. You're not doing the commandments in order for some reward. You're doing the commandments just because you want to be close to God. You want God to be in the world. All you say by means of this, we can draw it down, reveal God's upper will by means of the commandments that we can be asher kedishano. That God makes us holy, and He's that's what's kodesh. That's the yud, the holiness. We draw it down below. <clears throat> so that's the idea. First of all, we have to pray. We'll do this tomorrow. We have to pray first, and prayer is the arousal of our heart and the awareness of the reality of God and how God's reality is infinitely, infinitely more than our reality. In fact, we come from him. 
And when we feel this and we have this love and this awe of God, then it's there, then we can draw it down. That's the level of Yisrael. Then we can draw it down into the world by means of the commandments. That's the level of Yaakov. As God willing, we'll continue tomorrow. Now let's do the Devar Malchut.